So having discussed uh, the placement algorithms, let's go over to see how placement is done in practice in the backend tools. So in addition to wire length minimization, placement can be driven by two additional primary targets. So over here, we see that uh, the area, wire length, and overlap are the traditional place, uh, methods of placement. But we ha can't forget timing optimization or timing driven placement, which is uh, something that we need to meet the SDC constraints, right? And the second one is congestion minimization. So we have to remember that one of the goals of placement is to allow our um, whole design to be routed in the end. So uh, there are other things such as uh, clock tree and power minimization, but uh, we're not going to be discussing it uh, too much. So we have to take clock gating into consideration. And if we're doing all kinds of uh, uh, multi-voltage and multi-supply placement, we have to take those into consideration. So just going a sh for a tiny bit over the, the, the two additional targets we discussed, timing driven placement. So um, that tries to place critical path cells close together to reduce the net RCs and to meet setup timing. So what we do is we do these things called virtual routes, where we're actually going and connecting uh, routes between the, the different places, but without actually going up in vias and changing layers and taking the layers into consideration. We just try to place the cells along timing critical paths close together to reduce the net RCs and to meet setup timing. Um, the net RCs are based on virtual route estimates. This differentiates, for example, from uh, our previous uh, assumption where in synthesis we had these uh, type of wire load models that just took the net fan out and put in resistance and capacitance. So we already said that there is topographical synthesis or uh, physical aware synthesis, which does placement. And once we do placement, we can do this type of a trial route that just puts these um, single net, uh, single layer routings between the cells and can get a good assumption of what the RCs on the nets are. So that's a type of a thing that's done in placement. And again, nowadays it's already driven back into the synthesis tool in this physical aware or topographical synthesis. Um, the second uh, thing is congestion. So congestion occurs when the number of required routing tracks exceeds the number of available tracks. So if we have these types of global bins, which are areas where we'll have uh, lots of standard cells, maybe 100 or something like that, and we have edges of the bins, we know that um, a bunch of standard cells here want to go and connect to a bunch of standard cells that are in this type of a bin. So what we can see here is there's an area over here where, let's say, um, we can see that there are three routes that want to go um, over to this area. Uh, so the routing demand is three, but the routing supply maybe is only one. And then we have this overflow of three minus one equals two. So there would be an overflow of two in this area, and that is a high congestion area. Um, so overflow on each edge is defined as the routing demand minus the routing supply, of course. If that is, uh, if uh, the routing, if um, there is no overflow, then we get zero. So if uh, the routing supply is larger than the routing demand, the overflow is zero. And the total overflow is the sum of the overflow over all edges. Um, usually the, the tool will show us, and we'll see in on the next slide, uh, some examples of this maybe, or the slide after that. Um, but it'll show us for each direction here. So routing on the, in the global, if we have this global cell over here, um, routing in the horizontal direction, we have a demand of 39, but only a supply of 35. So there's overflow of four, or over here we have an overflow of one, uh, or here five, and here we have no overflow. Okay, so that's the type of a thing. And if we see these large overflow areas, that's really bad. So issues with congestion is that uh, are, are like this. Let's say that there's a bit of, of congestion over there and we need to take a route and route it from this side to this side. Um, what we can do is we can make a detour. So we can go around this area, not go through this high congestion area, and we'll be able to route our design and finish without any DRCs. The problem is that the RC delay of this type of a, a long route is much higher than a type of a route that just goes point to point. And that means um, that our, our RC estimates will be wrong, our virtual routing estimates will be wrong, and we'll um, get delay, delays that are optimistic. Okay. Um, the bigger problem is when we have these severely congested design, like as you can see here, this is probably a really bad routing hotspot. It's a high congested area, and we won't be able to route this, and we'll need to fix it. Usually the tools have uh, some sort of thing as, such as a congestion map. This would be some sort of a color map. Sometimes it comes in type of an ASCII style or just a, a, um, a summary of 
how many areas of congestion over this and this amount are. But um, in, in the cadence tools, we get these types of little um, uh, di uh, diamonds that show us uh, V158 over 150. That means there's a, an overflow of 8 in this area and uh, in the vertical direction, so going up and down. And if we have a lot of these red dots after um, trial route following placement, then uh, we should go back and try and fix it. So congestion-driven placement uh, tries to do this congestion reduction, tries to evaluate the congestion hotspots and spread the, the cells in the area to reduce congestion. Here's an example. This, again, is an example taken with the type of a routing channel that was used a couple decades ago. Um, so we have uh, cells A, B, C, and D, uh, E, F, G, and H, and we have the connection between them. And let's say we had only a, a small amount of uh, tracks that could actually go horizontally, but we need to route three tracks over here. So this is an unroutable layout. We have uh, some congestion that's uh, unroutable over there. What, we, uh, what the tool could do, it could just change the placement here so um, D was moved over to here and A was moved over to here and you see it solved all of our problems we're able to route this because there's only two horizontal routes in each area <coughs> So what are our strategies to fix congestion? Well, basically, you got to go back to the floor plan and modify it. That's the, the main strategy to fix the congestion. One thing is to go and put in different regions. So we can say if we have a, a routing hotspot over here in this area, we have a lot of congestion. We can go and mark it as a partial blockage area, put some sort of a low utilization in this area. If we have lower utilization, there'll be less routing here, and maybe that'll solve, solve our routing problems. Um, Ports. Ports are very important. Um, these can be either due to our pad placements or just if we're doing a hierarchical design, just where we put our actual pins. Um, we can change the ports to a different layer. We can spread them out. We can reorder them, move them to different sides. So moving our ports around on the sides and thinking about where they are may help us fix congestion, getting our ports closer to the actual macro where the actual macros will be placed and so forth. Macro location orientation. So again, um, our placement will be driven by macros. Remember that both the ports and the macros, they're kind of the anchors that um, are fixed before uh, running our placement algorithm. And they are the, the, the those anchors that are causing our springs to be loaded and, and pull the, the, the placement areas close to them. So just changing the macro location or orientation can um, really affect our congestion, um, in, including things such as aligning the bus signal pins, increasing the spacing between macros, adding blockages and halos, and just decide, making sure that the uh, all the macros that talk to the same block are in the same area and so forth. So the core aspect ratio and size is another thing. Um, if we have uh, uh, a, a lot of uh, horizontal routing, then we can make our core aspect ratio taller. We can uh, if we have a lot of, we can make it like this, we'll have more horizontal tracks. If on the other hand, we have vertical uh, problems, we can make it like this. We'll have more vertical tracks if we can resize our floor plan. Um, we can also just increase our block size. Of course, we can do that. Sometimes uh, this will not help because if um, we have uh, a large uh, floor plan, sometimes the tool will cluster things in a certain area. and We may have congestion in the middle, so we may have to do things such as this partial blockages and, and so forth. Um, and then another thing is uh, the power grid. So often we use, uh, as we said before in the, the floor planning lecture, that we have a trade-off of how well we distribute power versus how much routing we use up. Um, and again, this is a, a strong trade-off. We would like to give as much power as possible. But then again, this uh, causes us to have fewer tracks that are available for signal routing so we can um, take away uh, power uh, power stripes and even cut them in certain areas. Uh, but this will, of course, have an effect on how our IR drop-in uh, and so forth uh, arrives at each cell. So finally, just uh, looking at the Cadence tool, Inovus, how we do placement. So in the traditional flow, placement was achieved in two steps. What we would first do would be a uh, placement um, that would be set DB, place global congestion effort high, that type of a, a command would say we want to use this congestion driven placement. There are going to be a lot of these DB things that um, we can set before placement and before any other step of the design. And then we'd use this place design command, which would do a non timing, well, or at least a, a, it may be a timing driven, but lightly timing driven and lightly congestion driven placement that would go and try to um, 
uh, solve our placement problem, our placement problem, but without any optimization. Um, this includes a global placement and then a detailed placement step. But in general, that was the, the flow that was used. Um, afterwards, we would usually come out and run report timing and we'd have really terrible timing. Um, so we'd have to run a post placement optimization where we would do this uh, optimization effort, say hi, and then we would run opdesign minus pre CTS. Just uh, so you should know in the cadence tools, um, opdesign minus pre CTS is what would do high uh, fan out buffering, high fan out buffering. For example, on the reset trees, it would add buffers to the reset trees, so we wouldn't have a real high fan out on those types of nets. If you would not run off design minus pre CTS, you would be left with those uh, high fan outs. Okay, um, this has been a, a replaced in Anovis with uh, the GigaPlace tool, which uh, or the GigaPlace engine, which runs timing-driven concurrent placement and optimization. So in this case, we can again set our dBs uh, about different things such as uh, global congestion effort and so forth. Um, plus, we set our different dBs such as optimization effort, and then we just run one um, command, place op design, and it will do concurrent placement and uh, uh, and timing optimization. Um, another point is that sometimes we move things for some reason or uh, do something that disrupts how things were done. Maybe we add some sort of a cell uh, using an ECO or so forth, and we'll have um, a non-place cell, maybe some overlap or so forth, and then we want to do a placement legalization step in uh, the stylus common UI. This is uh, solved using the place detail command. So if we run place detail, it will do that uh, small simulated annealing or so forth algorithm to um, solve whatever type of uh, placement problem we have, such as an unplaced cell or an overlap and so forth. So that's all for this lecture on placement. And again, I'd really like to uh, acknowledge Ron Rutenbar, whose wonderful lectures from Logic with Layout um, really gave all the algorithmic basis behind this. Um, there's a lot of stuff from the IDESA courses and uh, Cadence and Synopsis documentation, of course, uh, give a large backing to all the practical aspects.